morning. Welcome to day 19 of the Manifesting Challenge. Let's have some coffee. I'm Amira Hall, and I promise to be here to support you in helping answer some of your questions in your Manifesting Challenge. Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of grounding and the science behind grounding. And a lot of people are talking about earthing. A little bit of review about what grounding is with regards to the whole science, not really understanding that this is not so much woo-woo, but it's actually based on a very practical, real reason. Um, I've benefited so much over this practice. In fact, I was first introduced to it when I was struggling with chronic fatigue syndrome over 30 years ago. And it was through the process of connecting with nature and through meditation, of course, and connecting with my body and nature, um, gardening and going for walks on the beach, being in nature, hugging trees or sitting by the lake. Um, and I found that it was actually very calming to my spirit. You know, I've continually observed people along the journey and watched them apply this tool and radically change their lives. So I'm an avid proponent of it. And here's why. Um, as much as we're continually challenged to really understand it, I think um, we to understand the very technical, simple aspect of it, that the earth has a negative cha uh, charge to it. And everything within our physical body is needs to be electrically uh, grounded or made, grounded to maintain stability. In other words, our human body is the most electrical system there is. You're probably well aware that all of the devices, electronic equipment we have and electrical equipment all have a grounding wire. And for the very same reason, we don't have one per se in a technical way. So we have to connect with nature and allow this flow or release of energy in another way. So in there's a, there seems to be a movement, an earthing movement, Dr. David Wolf, and there's another fellow by the name of Clint Ober. They've been researching this and they created devices that people are actually relying on grounding shoes, there's grounding mats now, and other devices to help people reduce inflammation. And, and, and I'll go through all of the other things. But Again, it's it's using an external device other than nature to connect with it. Now, we're in a modern, busy society. I get it. A lot of us live in apartments or high rises and away from nature. Our whole livelihood is based on the computer or, you know, on the phone and other ways we've unplugged from nature. So I know for myself that grounding and implementing this has been life changing. But as I said, we can't always go out and be in nature. That is my favorite place. And every single day, I take myself for a walk along the river in, in the park or wherever I find myself in the world, I try to find a place that is I feel connected to where there is a natural flow and release of energy. But that's not always possible. And that's why I'm such a strong advocate for learning this particular technique that I've been harping on and teaching. So um, yes, um, in terms of just connecting with nature, something as simple as walking in the grass, right? With your bare feet, touching the earth, gardening. Um, I, I'm an avid gardener. Um, there's a lot of people joke about tree hugging, but if you actually sit next to the tree or connect with the tree, you can actually feel yourself literally release energy, re release tension. You know, I think what's really happened is our modern society, we've disconnected from our natural roots, our natural abilities. We went from being farmers and hunter gatherers to now we're desk workers and, you know, inside workers. We've been locked in for the last two years. And what what's happened is we've become vitamin G deficient. We aren't connecting with nature in the old way. So coming back and learning how to give our body, our system, the support it needs to restore harmony, to, you know, minimize dis-ease. 
and dysfunction. It, my go-to tool is grounding. You know, I thought, I thought it was pretty interesting. If you consider that animals in nature don't have, or it's, it's re relatively rare for animals to have cancer or cardiovascular disease, and yet all our domesticated animals, all of our pets are seemingly develop the very same diseases that their owners seem to um, get. So there's something happening here of us being disconnected from our energetic source, which is the earth and of course the cosmos. So I want to say the 10 most important reasons that I do grounding and that I'm a promoter of grounding and it's why it's an integral tool in all of the practices and all of the trainings that I work with people. The first thing is that it makes the body feel safe. When we're grounded and seated in a chair with our feet flat on the floor, we can start releasing tension. So it's a tool, a technique to, again, bringing the body into the present moment, it can start letting go of tension by giving it that awareness and permission. In doing that, we're gently and slowly healing our body. We're giving it permission to release and that reduces inflammation. It reduces and eliminates pain because all pain in terms of energetics is stuck energy. It's energy that stopped flowing. So that again, reduces disease, dysfunction, okay, and the slow decay of our body and system. It helps us to become more present. So in terms of breathing, how are we breathing? What are we noticing in our environment? Is it too cold? Is it too warm? Am I comfortable? It helps me to come into a place of being safe. And it is bringing us into balance with our natural rhythms, not rhythms or our or aspects or patterns that are not natural to us. It helps us to come into focus. When we can let go of the pain and we're reducing tension, we can actually come here, focus and paying attention to this moment and what we're tending to, whether you're baking a cake, whether you're getting a massage, whether you're, you know, teaching, you're helping your kids with homework, um, or perhaps it's even putting on your makeup in the day. So it helps to, it reduces the struggle because we can be present. It reduces the struggle against the, 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 the need or desire to focus. So they're what I call resistance. So when we're not struggling or in resistance, we can just be dialed in. Okay, I think this is number five or six. It helps shift our mood. Instantly, when I speak to my clients and we're practicing our grounding, gee, I feel lighter. I feel brighter. I'm not as worried about the problem I had 10 minutes ago. And also it helps to improve sleep. Over the years working with my clients and students, many of them have reported reducing their sleep medication or stopping it completely. A lot of people are telling me that struggled with insomnia, that all of a sudden they're getting seven hours sleep, eight hours sleep, and they just feel so much better. And it's all because they're grounding. Athletes over the years have reported to me that their, their performance has improved, their ability to uh, endure or last longer, um, be more accurate. I remember one fella in my class, he was saying that he wasn't able to stay in the longer meditation, but just by practicing the grounding, his golf game improved because he was able to focus focus on the ball, focus on his swing and all the movements. He was connected to it. And the ninth most important reason why this is so effective in manifesting is that over time, there's an accumulated benefit to this. And what happens is the effects start to snowball. And all of a sudden you notice, oh my gosh, something I used to do or worry about is no longer 
an, an issue for me. And bottom line, number 10 reason is this enhances your manifesting ability. When you're able to be present in the moment, you're able to focus, you're able to release the tension and the worry and the resistance and the struggle. You're setting a stage, you're setting your energy space to receiving, to be open, to having inspiration, to being and seeing possibilities that perhaps you couldn't see or receive or conceive of in the past. It's a way for you to, um, to be more optimistic because your mood shifts and you will realize because you're realize you're feeling so much better, you're more inclined to repeat it. And you're more inclined to go give yourself the exercise because you're feeling better. And you'll have more energy throughout your day for any activities and dreams that you've long forgotten or put them on the shelf and been ignoring. I hope this is, is well enough grounds for you to pay attention to your grounding, practice your grounding. You know, my students often say, well, how often should I be grounding, Amira? Well, the very first tool, I believe it's eight minutes practice, right? So, but if you can be sitting there for longer periods of time, go for it. You know, I always encourage my beginning students to practice the stress buster or, or sit with your the cosmic and earth energies flowing at least 15 minutes a day. If you can't make it 15 minutes a day, you need to do 30. <laughs> and if you can't do 30, then you need to do an hour, okay? That means you're really clogged up, okay? And there's a lot of energy to be released. As I said, the benefits are accumulative. Things continue to grow and improve with time. And I have to say, one of the biggest things with my mentoring students that we start to integrate and become aware of is being grounded all day long. Like if you're cleaning out the dishwasher, you know, or setting the dishes in the cupboard, ground yourself. Notice when you put on your shoes to go for your walk, are you grounded? Are you grounded on the walk? You can ground yourself driving to pick the kids up. You can ground yourself at the grocery store. You can ground yourself at the dental office. Wherever you find yourself talking to clients, talking on the phone, um, whatever activities you do, the more you can begin to integrate the awareness of having your grounding cord attached at the base of your spine to the center of the earth, it helps immensely because any charge or electricity or barrage, an energetic attack or somebody's freak out energy or panic, then that energy won't get lodged in your space. And so for all you teachers and healers and mothers and, and, and everybody that is super sensitive to energy, grounding will help you immensely. It also helps us to come into awareness of our responsibility where something perhaps is our issue or challenge and where we might be overstepping our boundaries in, in certain circumstances. So it helps us to learn and understand and manage our own energy space. And it also is a tool that I use as we get into it in a multiple different ways. We can use it to solve problems. We can use it to um, not only to heal ourselves, but to heal challenges and things that are blocking us or stuck in our way, obstacles that we're facing. And I hope you uh, find this helpful so that you'll come back tonight when I'm going to guide you through a live guided meditation where I will actually help you with some of those things. So more than anything, just practice that tool that I'm giving to you and make it your best friend. Okay. I guarantee it will show up and be there for you in ways that will blow your mind. Now, and again, I can say that to you a gazillion times, but you have to prove it to yourself. Do your own study, do your own research, experiment on yourself, prove it to yourself that this stuff works, okay? And if you have any questions about how this is working or not working for you, or some obstacles that you're noticing in, in, in practicing this for yourself, just drop me a note, leave a comment there, and I'd be happy to answer those questions for you. And if this is helpful for you, 
please give this video a thumbs up. I really, truly appreciate it. Share it with somebody that's being some challenged with their grounding or being present or manifesting. So, hey, I'm ready for some more coffee. How about you? Let's go for it and have a magical grounded day.